Hello, and welcome, or welcome back, to this guide to mental sauntering. I want this to be a place where we can just share ideas together, so I'm going to go through the mental cataloging of my thoughts throughout any particular day, and we'll explore them together. So, regarding last time, I want to put forth a little bit of a disclaimer, and that is that I want to assure whoever may have listened to that video or watched it and thought, wow, he really is <laughs> kind of pretentious and he's excluding himself from a certain degree of it. I'm not saying that. I am not precluding myself from exhibiting the behavior of pretentiousness. What I am doing, though, is resolving to not let it deter me any longer. And I think that was the point in a large way about that last video. You can accept something about yourself that is a shortcoming or an undesirable quality, something that you would just rather not be a part of yourself, and resolve to move on. Resolve to fix it, overcome it, deal with it, whatever it is, that was the point. And so, I'm not going to let it stop me any longer. Even if I did want to let it stop me, if I wanted to be af continue being afraid and say, well, people might think I'm pretentious, so I can't continue to share my thoughts in this manner. It doesn't matter. I am now duty-bound to continue with these videos and at least give this one more. Because I had a friend watch the first video. I had a few friends watch the first video. I uh, piloted it among some of you to get an idea to uh, float the trial balloon to see if this would be received well. And it was. By one person in particular, what she did was she watched the video and almost immediately she identified a problem of hers that she would rather not have, an inhibition, a fear, and she already had steps planned that she would undergo to overcome this inhibition. What that means to me is that the video was at least meaningful and useful to one person and that just made me feel like this is the sort of thing that could really be helpful to me. I, I get to explore some of my own thoughts and to others. If they uh, recognize inhibitions of their own or if we look at uh, perceptive patterns of our own that we want to change or that we can analyze and understand more, that's a good thing. That's what I do when I go on walks with friends. That's what I do when I walk or think by myself. That's the goal here and I'm just trying to share it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Let's look at something that comes, I think, as a direct result of or consequence of what we spoke about the first time. It's not necessarily where do we go from those inhibitions. I talked about that a little bit. It's kind of simple. Just do what you know you need to do. If you're too fat, go exercise. If you're too stupid, read a book. If you're not good enough at math, practice the math. Those kinds of things. Accept those things and move on. But this is the fact that I don't think it's the problems themselves that keep us from moving. And I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but I really want to focus on it today. It's our view of the problems that stops us from moving forward. It's our mental paradigm, it's our perspective that prevents us from moving forward with our goals and aspirations. A perfect example, and a word that I'm becoming annoyed with quite quickly, and I'm going to try to stop using soon, is the example that I gave of my fear of being thought of or found out as pretentious. I let that stop me. But if you really think about it, being pretentious, even if I am, and I am at times for certain, it doesn't stop me from anything. There's not one thing that being pretentious could really stop me from doing. But I let it. I let it do that because I, I constructed this reality in my own mind that said, it was significant enough that I shouldn't be able to go forward with these things that I wanted to do, like making these videos. Sometimes the problem itself can stop you from moving forward. I'm not suggesting that that's not the case. I mean, a broken leg can very easily cause your hiatus from walking. That's a problem that stops you. But that broken leg doesn't stop you from moving at all. It may mentally stop you from moving at all. You may say, well, there's no use in going anywhere. I'll just have to, um, it, maybe you're so injured that you have to use a wheelchair or crutches. Uh, not everybody comes to this state, but that is the sort of idea that we're talking about is when you let that problem debilitate you more than it should. And there are a lot of problems that shouldn't debilitate you at all, and we let them. And that all has to do with our mental perspective. And so if we 
all followed what happened last time, what I did and hopefully what others did, I know that one friend of mine at least has begun the process of doing, is we underwent a mental paradigm shift. We, paradigm, excuse me. We looked at our perspective and we shifted it. What I want to suggest is that such a paradigm shift is not only useful for unfettering yourself in pursuit of your aspirations and goals, you get to go do what you want to do now because you're no longer afraid, but it also makes life more pleasant, it makes it more fulfilling, and it makes you more productive. There are certain paradigm shifts that I think are really important. So I want to encapsulate that and demonstrate that by sharing several paradigm shifts that I think have been integral to my own increased productivity, happiness, and, um, well, what was that other third thing I said? Whatever that third thing I said was, it increased it, and I'll, I'm sure I'll get it here when I go about explaining the three mental paradigm shifts. So the first one, uh, I was actually reminded of when I went to work out with a friend of mine. His, mo his mom is a trainer, and she is very very good at talking about what is going on mentally uh, that either keeps you from doing your exercises to your most optimum degree or um, helping you along with doing that she explains why you're doing things so that you can just do them in a more effective way and one thing that she said was sometimes and I think a lot of people can relate that, to this I found myself relating to this on a very fundamental level you you wake up you're in bed and you say, I'm fat and I feel miserable, I don't feel good about my body image or the way my body feels. And then you go work out, you go for that really hard run or you go do that uh, weight exercise routine, you do however many sets you normally do. And then you look at your, yourself in the mirror because there's blood coursing through those areas that you're focusing on and you say, wow, I look great. And you feel good too because y you know that you just accomplished something that is an action that leads to a mental paradigm shift. It wasn't the fact that you were actually beyond improvement that made you feel that way you did in the morning. It was your mindset. Your mindset changes once you actually see yourself doing something about your problem because it becomes a manageable problem. It becomes something that you can tackle, you can overcome, you can just put behind you. So that, I think, is an example, a really good example of the first kind of mental paradigm shift or shift in perspective. You make your progress feel more fulfilling. Sometimes you make it feel a little too fulfilling because uh, you need a lot of exercise to get to where, well, where some of us have our goals. I want to get, you know, toned and fit again. I know I'll have to do more than one, uh, one to two hours of weight training or I'll have to run more than you know, once a week or something like that. I'm gonna have to put work into it. But after you do it, you feel like you've put all the work in the world. Like You feel like maybe uh, you've been at this for years and now everything's ship shape and okay. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a danger there too in feeling uh, like you've made too much progress, but that's the opposite end of the spectrum and we can get there for another time. Another kind of mental paradigm that I've had introduced to me actually by a professor is the following. It's very easy to be lazy at home. It's very easy to be lazy anywhere. It's easy to go to school, for instance, and feel the way that you look. If you go to school in sweatpants and you go in your baggy shirt and you let your posture slouch and you're not looking up and you've got your head on the desk or whatever, you're going to feel tired. You're going to act tired. You're going to be tired. Sometimes that's okay. If you have a good enough handle on the material, you can get past it. You don't need to pay attention as much. But if you are struggling or you need that class, you shouldn't go to class that way. You should dress up. You should uh, wear a polo or pants or whatever it is that you need to just feel, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself there, to look at least a little bit professional, a little bit like you belong in the space that you are. And the reason for that, my professor told me, is uh, because I asked him, why do you come to school, uh, you're dressed up every day, he's wearing slacks every day, he, he could put a suit jacket over whatever he's wearing on most days and look like, you know, he'd look right at home with his sartorial choices. He wears button-down shirts. He, you never, you almost never catch him on a casual-looking day. And when you do, you know that he was in a rush or something like that. It's not his typical thing. 
And he told me, when he looks professional, he feels professional, he acts professional. I think that's a great idea. I found myself several times since then, more than several really, struggling to be productive at home with homework. I just wasn't doing it, I was procrastinating, I would do one problem that took me five minutes and I'd watch a video for 10 or 20 minutes and say, well, let's pack it up, I did a great job. And that just wasn't doing it. So sometimes, you know, I'd put on a button down shirt, I'd put on at least pants, you know, some jeans or slacks or something like that. I, I rarely went to slacks, but at least jeans or shorts sometimes, you know, uh, if I wasn't wearing any pants at all. And it worked. I, I felt more professional. I acted more professional. I changed my mindset. I made a physical choice. I made a physical change that resulted in a mental change that allowed me to get what I needed done. So I think that's a really good example of how a change in perspective can be uh, can result in you being more productive. And the last one that I want to talk about is I was at the grocery store and there was this huge line. Well, there wasn't a huge line at first. There was no line at all. And we were zipping through and everything was going great. And then one guy comes up and he's got a label missing on this package of meat. And then came the huge line. And all of these people start complaining. All of these managers come to the cash register to try to help out with the situation, try to figure out what this missing label was, how to go from here. And people behind me are oh so upset they're saying oh my goodness we're never gonna get out of here this line is so long look it goes back into the aisles this never happens and I was sitting there like an idiot or standing there uh, with a big smile on my face because to me that meant that the, the state of normalcy is an incredible one it's it should be one that we're awestruck by what what was happening was the endeavor of commerce uh, the delicate threads that we have woven that are our capitalist system are so delicately threaded that the the absence of a single label can bring it all to a grinding halt. That doesn't mean that you should be upset when it breaks down. That means you should be really relieved and happy and maybe awestruck that it works so well in the first place. I think if you take that mental paradigm shift, for instance, if your car breaks down one day, really try to not be upset about that one day that it broke down. Try to revel in all the days that it got you where it needed, where you needed to go. It worked most of the time. You should think about it like that. You shouldn't think about the one breakdown, unless you break down all the time and then you've got bigger problems, you need a new engine, whatever it is. That's different. But if something that normally works really well breaks down once, really try to think about not being upset then. Try to think about looking at that as, well, a victory. That's... That's a good thing. Things normally work really well. And I think those are three examples of mental paradigm shifts that are very helpful for continuing this endeavor that is life. I'm running really short on time here, so I think I'm going to wrap it up there. But thank you for listening. I hope that you find those mental paradigms useful. I hope that in some way, something within this uh, well, litany and this cataloging of ideas has been useful to you. What I would like for anybody who views this to do, if this goes up on YouTube, I would like it if you could put down um, mental paradigm shifts that you've come across that you found to be useful, or a paradigm that you used to have that was not useful. If, any, if anybody does that, I'd be extremely pleased. Thank you so much, and until next, that's this second guide to mental sauntering.